this your first time tuning in. This is Straight Outta Content Podcast, also known as Agree to Disagree. It looks like right now, Jamel Charlo and his brother, I won't say big brother, I won't say big brother, but Jamel Charlo and his brother, Jamal Charlo, are agreeing to disagree. Let's listen. This is my first time hearing it. Oh, by the way, if this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell so that you can be updated for all the new boxing content, the real boxing content, the real boxing stories. None of that clickbait, you know, none of that. We got red blood over here. As you see, I'm wearing red today. No, nothing affiliated, but there's some people out there who go by blood in their YouTube name. I'm not going to give them any shine. I'm not going to give them any credit. But they got blood in their YouTube name and they putting out fake news, putting out fake boxing news, putting out clickbait boxing stories. It's not true. It's not true. So I kind of feel like Jamel right here, honestly. But we're going to go ahead and play this clip because this is my first time hearing it. I want you guys to hear if you haven't heard it, you can check it out on Fight Hype. You can check, it was it was on Jamel's Instagram page. He was going crazy. Let's listen. If you don't know, on Instagram, Jamal Charlo, who fights at 160, WBC, middleweight champion of the world, he goes by Big Charlo on Instagram. Jamel, who fights at 154, they're both fighting on a pay-per-view uh, card September 26th. Make sure you tune in on uh, Showtime. Jamel, his Instagram name is Twin Charlo. So just a little backstory. Let's go ahead. Let's keep playing. Nigga, we talking facts. Nigga, I got these to my shit. I'll pull my shit up, post it on my story for y'all. Nigga, I did that, nigga. Million. What? Over a million on this bitch, nigga. And still investing more in the bitch. And still got cribs all around this bitch. Nigga, I'm comfortable, man. What y'all talking about? Show no pool and no balcony and none of that shit, nigga. Shit don't make you a champion. No shit don't make you nothing. Shit don't make you nothing. I promise this ain't tea. I promise this ain't tea. This is water. It's lines only, all right? It's lines only. I'm lines only CEO. And anybody that was ever in competition with me, they're going to fucking fail. All right? I'm going to fight September 26th. I'm going to make a fucking main event. And then you know champ get paid for that shit. Nigga, we work hard. They just want to be like us. There ain't no more funny in me and me. All I say is rock with me, dog. Rock with me. I already, like I said, I went to the top already. I seen the bottom before. At the top, I seen the bottom. I went back down to the bottom and shot back the fuck back up. Now, what they mad at me for? Stay the fuck out my way, dog. They know what it is. And I'm letting everybody in the world know. Nigga, and all the hardest. What he meant by that, if you don't know, this is your first time tuning in, or if you don't really follow the Charlo brothers, what he meant by going down to the bottom and then sh shooting right back up, he had a loss. He's about to go into it, but he had a loss a very controversial loss and he, and he, uh, in the rematch, he beat the guy. So um, that's what he's talking about, but he's about to touch on that, I think. Dogs out there that got the same energy as me, I wake up with that energy and they like, wow, check, calm down, calm down, calm down. Calm down, I'm fucking calming down and do what y'all fuckers tell me to do. This me and me forever. And I ain't never changing me and I'll be done with boxing when I'm done with it, I'm gonna be the same way y'all stay out my way. I be at the fight telling y'all what's up. Yeah, now, future boxing, you, you on this hoe. Now, right like I was right, no, your shit tell me if I'm lying about anything I said. Yeah, September 26 is all I give a fuck about, and that's all that matter. Me being prepared, me being ready for everything that's fucking in my face right now. All you hating ass niggas that's on the other side, nigga, I, I got something to prove to you too. All y'all, I'm gonna always have something to prove. I'm 33 and 1. 33 and 1, I'm proud of my win. Now what? That one was a robbery, nigga ain't did shit for holding a gun up trying to take it from me. Nigga, I know I got more life to live, nigga. Still caught another me in two, three, four. Boy, but after that, what? Niggas can't play with me, man. I'm strapped up too, nigga. So if your partners come over here playing, well, I'm going to smack the fuck out of them. Any one of them niggas I see, man, you know me. And they know me. Yo, 
was an air buster. I'm a man of my kingdom. And you be a man of your kingdom over there. But don't get on that live talking that shit like I'm about, I ain't about that life. Anybody can know. Any fucking body know me. No, I will smack something. I'm not talk about it, nigga. I'll be about it, nigga. I'm God. I'm glad God gave me so many opportunities. I'm still here. I done done some stupid shit. I'm still here. They still trying to bring a nigga down and take a nigga out. They can't. Yeah, everything is a competition with me, nigga. Everything is a competition with me. Yeah. What's wrong with me, nigga? You went on live. You mo I'm talking to you, future boxing. You went on that bitch early this morning talking about ringside with the lines, ain't my channel. Ain't this nigga. I'm proud of what I do. I pay for my photographer and videographer. Nigga, every, every week, nigga, get a good check, nigga. To make sure I got good content for my fans that respect me and, and love me and for what I do. I've been changing life since day one. I've been changing lives. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to still change lives. I was coming up in the game with Delahoya, nigga. I, I, you, you fought some of the niggas I had already beat. What you talking about? You fought Dionne's twice. I beat him first. And, and then you turn around and fought some, some Puerto Rican kid. Come on, bro. I don't even want to go there with you. Stop playing with me. I'm the king. I'm the done of this shit. But I'm the little male. I'm going to let y'all keep walking around talking this little Charlo shit. I'm going to let y'all niggas keep talking about little, little twin. Nah, nigga. You mean 154? You mean the king of 154? Now I got a whole bunch more to prove. I'm fired the fuck up this morning. Yeah, nigga. And take your bitch, keep my fucking mouth closed. Damn. God damn. Because I'm bitching in, in her lane. Take your bitch, stay in pocket, nigga. Damn. Just come over here talking stupid to me. Tell her get that fake ass account off of here, nigga. Every time I post them, nigga, don't post nothing about no lines only elite, nigga. Fuck the lines only elite. Any nigga that support it, nigga, it's lines only promotion. That's what it is. Faggot ass niggas. Yo, you. Damn. I'm sorry. That was our fight hype. Damn. Shout out to fight hype. That's how we gonna start this podcast off. God. I don't even know what to say. I know here at Straight Outta Content, you know, I, I touched on this. If you go back to episode 11 of the Straight Outta Content podcast, Agree to Disagree, you will hear me talk about I don't know where Jamel's head is at. But I don't see... If when I hear that from a fighter, between what's what's going on between him and his family and his brother, that's none of my business. If I was a coach, I'd tell him, don't lose that fire. Don't burn it out this morning. Carry that same fire and keep putting logs in that fire all the way to September 26th, and you will do the job that you gotta do. We've seen it before. We've seen it from all the greats, all the greats. Now, sometimes you get some people who talk the talk and don't necessarily walk the walk. It looks like to me, from what I've seen from his Instagram and stuff like that, he's walking the walk in training. Now, we won't know. We don't know re what's really going on behind the scenes. We only know what fighters and camps want to show us. I don't see much of Rosario or Jason, however you pronounce his name. I don't see much of him. We know that he's the champion. They're both champions, but we know that this is to unify the 154-pound division. We know that he's, you know, he knocked out J-Rock and this is going to be a very tough fight for Jamel. I didn't see what happened on Instagram, nor do I care, because like I said, they're brothers. That's none of my business. They're both right here in Houston. I hope to meet both of them. I hope to interview both of them. So I will never comment on anything that goes on with their family, with their wives, with their children, with their, with their friends. That's none of my business. I'm here to report boxing. And as somebody who's grown up in boxing since a little kid, trains my daughter, name my daughter a boxing name, I eat, sleep, and breathe boxing. When I see a fighter like that, when I see a fighter fired up like that, 
That's different than popping shit. See, there's a difference. There's a difference between popping shit and then there's a difference between letting letting somebody know. In that video, whoever he's talking to, he's letting them know. He's letting the world know he's sick of the little Charlo thing. He's letting the world know that he's here to stay. And you know what? I can't blame him. You know, whether or not he hangs up the phone and calls his brother and is like, yo, this is crazy. It's going to go viral because it did. Right. This is the world that we live in. Um, I call it the Adrian Broner blueprint. We've seen Floyd do it, but Floyd didn't necessarily get to utilize the social media area era. And by the time he did, it was really at the very beginning of the social media era. He benefited from it. He was able to use his last few years to really benefit from it. But Adrian Broner, he really came up in it and he really made a name for himself in a marquee by being on social media, win, lose, or draw, you wanted to see Adrian Broner fight. You know, you did. And he's been one of the highest paid fighters, especially for the little guys, for the longest. And it was all because of his mouth. You never knew what he was going to say next. We never got to see too much of what was going on in his, in his camp. I think that Another thing that he didn't have that I see that Jermel has is stability. You know, <clears throat> they're two different they're two different people, so I'm not here to compare them. But what I'm saying is because I'm saying this very serious. When I see Jermel, I see Jermel He's using that like he he's using the and I, I'm not I hate to say this, but there's the Adrian Broner and Takashi six nine thing going on for marketing. We know that Lions only YouTube or ringside with the Lions. We know that that's Jamel's thing like he's growing that and more power to him. He's building a life for himself outside of boxing, which is what he's supposed to do. Like if you if you're mad at that. That's then you don't know boxing. You don't know what the hell's going on. You're supposed to build Floyd. Floyd taught us all that. He's he's seeing guys like Life with Corey and YouTube and on a budget and all these other guys who have lives, full blown lives, money, damn near just as much money as him all through YouTube. So he's like, I'm killing myself getting punched in the face and y'all is on YouTube making damn near just as much money as me or whenever I'm not fighting y'all making money all year based off of these videos. I oh, know nah, I want some of that. I want some of that. And what he's doing is going viral. And this is just, this ain't even like a mega fight. Like this ain't even that he's the marquee. If he fights another marquee fighter and the world is watching, his numbers are going to go up. So I can't knock him. I can't knock him. Jamal, He's he seems to be more quiet. He definitely talks, but he seems to be more quiet. They don't they don't uh, train in the same camps anymore. And it looks like that whatever happened kind of spilled over. But they're brothers at the end of the day. What I what I will suggest to anybody out there who's showing this video or who's commenting on this video or who's you know reporting this type of content what I would tell you is stay out of it because one day you will have to see these guys and whoever side you picked or whichever one you thought you was rocking with oh I'm rocking with Jamal oh I'm rocking with Jamal oh, da -da -da -da. okay I'm letting you know at the end of the day they're brothers they're, they've been, I can guarantee you, this is not the first fight that they had. And any person who has a brother, whether or not you're a girl, you have a brother, or whether or not you're a boy, you have a brother, you know that you fought with your brother, especially if it's your twin and you're in a combat sport. That's like, don't get in it. And I guarantee you, because I heard Jamel say something about 
uh, Blue Blood Sports. I said his name. And I've been saying that on almost every podcast. Guys like him are bad for boxing. They're bad for boxing news because they only report clickbait. They just put out these things and they put out their opinions. You got other guys giving opinions on these fighters. I've said it since day one, since my first podcast. We're not here to knock fighters. I'll have my opinions. Like I've said, and I'll say it again. I think Mike Tyson's picking on Roy Jones. That's just my opinion. Am I knocking him as a man? No. I'm not going, I'm not going to anything outside of the square circle. That's it. I keep all of my opinions on their boxing life. That's it, in the square. Not on what they're doing outside. That's none of my business. To me, it's entertaining because it's all a part of the business. If you're just gonna be like, you can you can be like Canelo. You can be like Canelo, but Canelo's Latino. It's a different atmosphere, a different, a different culture to where they're not, you, you, you haven't seen too many, Hector Camacho was probably about the most flamboyant Latino fighter. Outside of that, you're not going to get too many crazy outlandish Latino fighters. You know what I mean? You get some other fighters, but not necessarily them. So they can be quiet, like a Leo Santa Cruz. Leo Santa Cruz, you don't hear from him all day. He lets his fist do the talking. He's just as successful. Even a, now you get somebody like a Ryan Garcia, but Ryan Garcia is part of this new era and he's got a following. So it really just depends. And I think that what Jamel is doing, he's going viral and it's good for his brand long term. If he can continue to rack up wins, at 154, he's going to eventually move to 160. So if he can continue to rack up wins, and if he even becomes competition for his brother at 160, I don't. I hope that they never fight. I never want to see family fight. But what I'm saying is that he has an opportunity to reign supreme at middleweight with his brother, which would be crazy. That'd be a record. Two twins at the same weight class, and they have all the belts. That'd be crazy. Like, that's... That's on some like Klitschko, Vitaly type stuff, v- uh, Vitaly and Vladimir. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to play that because it was my first time hearing it and it was just crazy. Again, I I touched on it before. I hope that he's, when I touched on it before, that was kind of in the beginning of the training camp. If it's the 17th, we're about 30 days, no, no, a little over 30 days out. Yeah, we got uh, like six weeks left for him to really fine tune everything and train and get his weight there and everything and hit that 154 and, you know, not be tired. So me, I like fire like that. Some people, oh, he's talking trash. Oh, da, 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 da. Hey, look, look, if you can back it up, which he's done, he's beat every man that he's faced, whether or not he's lost to him, he still came back and beat him because he could have took somebody else. He wanted that second fight. He came back. It was still a close fight, but he still came back and beat him. That's respect. They ain't fighting a third time. You know what I mean? And then not only that, he has the opportunity to fight for the belts. I would be in that same mindset too. We've seen Floyd do it. He even called out Floyd. I can't knock him. I bet you, even when he called out Floyd, I guarantee you Floyd looked at him and said, yeah, he right. He ready. I can guarantee you that when he called out Floyd Mayweather, said, yeah, if you ever want to come back, you want to come back to 154, I guarantee you, because fighters, trainers, we know, like, like people who study boxing, we know this, Omar, I guarantee you, tell me if I'm wrong, leave a comment down below, Omar, tell me if I'm wrong, tell me if I'm wrong that when Floyd Mayweather saw Jamel Charlo calling him out, he, he probably laughed to himself like, yo, yeah, yeah, he ready. He ready because fighters go through a certain level and they and he's in his prime right now. He hasn't fought in a while. He's hungry. He's real, real hungry. He knows what's at stake. Win, lose, or draw. He may feel like this, go out there, perform, and the other guy just be the better man. That doesn't mean that he wasn't prepared. That just means that the other man won. That's it. That doesn't take away from how good he was. 
Sometimes that happens and he can bounce back and come back even stronger. That's what he did the first time. Doesn't mean that the other dude was better than him. That's just what happens in boxing. It's not like what happened on Saturday. That was a robbery. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go ahead and get into the Roley fight. The Roley versus Marirez uh, fight. Marirez, I think. Hey, all my Latinos, <laughs> leave a comment below if I'm pronouncing that right. That fight, that, that was a robbery. Like, that fight gave boxing a bad name. I hate, hate when I see fights like that. I hate when I see fights like that. Two undefeated guys. If at anything, you 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 make it a draw. You don't rob the one guy just because the other guy's with the promotional company. Like, that's like you can't do that. Like, you really put a bad stain on everybody, Ryan Garcia, uh, Tank Davis. Everybody was commented, Oscar De La Hoya. Everybody was commenting on that fight. And I understand because Oscar De La Hoya has been robbed in some crazy fights. The Trinidad fight for one. But I don't like, not only after, like, I'm not going to say I lost respect for him, but he's got a lot to learn. Hopefully he learns from this fight. I'm not going to say I lose respect for a fighter because what the judges chose what I didn't like was how he how he was commenting and kind of boasting after saying that the guy can't win the fight by just running around and he was the aggressor. No, that's not what happened. That's not what happened. They showed the punch stats after he outlanded you by like 40 punches. These are the facts. He outlanded you by like 40 punches. You lost that fight. I could see if it was close, like the like the Mayweather Castillo fight. But that was a shoulder injury involved in that fight, and he had to basically fight one-handed. And we've seen a lot of other fights like that. You know what I mean? With the, the Wilder Fury fight. That was a close fight. But and that was warranted. They gave it a date. The judges scored it correctly. Whether or not you feel that one fighter won or lost, the judges scored it correctly so that they could go on and have an even better fight and have an even career. Nothing was taken from them in their, in their career. Speaking of Jamel Charlo, some people say that he was robbed against in his first fight against Tony Harrison. But that was a lot closer than this fight. This fight wasn't close at all. And then what was crazy about that, the judges had it so wide for Roley. What the, were they watching? What fight were they watching? And when you do stuff like that, you take a lot from the fighter who trained all that time, trained all that time, put in all that work, doing everything he can to win the fight. Like that takes a lot out of a fighter because then you feel like, well, sh what, what do I got to do? I have to knock everybody out. And I think, it, I mean, obviously, Roley has a name in social media. He's with the familiar with the camp, which is great. He's the, he's the marquee fighter, right? He's the marquee fighter. So he kind of has that backing. Like if it's going to happen to anybody, if, if whoever's going to get the, the, the decision, whoever's going to get the raw deal is the person who's not with the company. You know, if the, if the roles were reversed and the other guy was with TMT and the event was put on by, you know, the Mayweather promotion, which is great, then he probably would have got the nod and Roley would have got the loss. I understand that. I understand that. And I understand that happens. But at the end of the day, if the judges are going to, if the judges are going to root for somebody, right? If the judges are there, they're going to root for somebody. They're going to make sure that somebody doesn't lose. Just make it a draw. That's it. If you, if you're a judge and you're going to, screw over a fighter just make it a draw that's it that's fine then both fighters go on they could do a rematch or stuff like that but Roley will probably never fight this kid again that's not like that that gives the biggest thing good thing it wasn't that big of a fight and too many eyes weren't on this on this fight Benavidez did great 
you know what I mean? Um, it's great to see him headline a card. Uh, I want to see the numbers on the card. Great fight by both of them, by, by Benavidez and the guy who we fought, um, Angulo. But I'm just glad that nobody was really too in tune to this fight. Because if this was a mega fight, it would it would be going viral. We can't have this in boxing. Like, I, I really thought that these judges would have picked the right decision, but they didn't. It's just sad. It's just sad. It's just, I can't, I don't know. I don't think, but what we got to see was, we got to see that and he's not beating any of the top guys. Roley is... Roley is an amazing talent, but like they were saying during the fight, he's extremely raw. He's extremely raw. He has all the ability to be a great champion. He reminds me of a young Cotto slash Danny Garcia. That's what he reminds me of, like a mixture, because he punches crazy. He has the punching power of Danny Garcia, but he kind of has like a movement a little bit of, of a Cotto, of a young Cotto. But young Cotto was very sharp early very sharp early that was his thing he was very sharp he threw a lot of combinations and stuff like that and he could box same thing with Danny Garcia and Dan, you know I mean Danny Garcia is a lot more polished now and stuff like that but even at his young age he was still still precise I don't know what's going on with Rolly's camp I think that he needs to go back to the drawing board and make sure that this type of fight never happens again because if he was in there with a heavy puncher he'd have got hurt so if he calls out any of these, these Devin Haney's, these Ryan, Gar I think him and Ryan might be a great fight strictly because of where they're at in their careers and a win over each other right now would boost you to that next level. Like they've got enough clout right now and with social media and everything to where a win right now over either of each other is a good boost and it's still a it'd still be a great fight maybe even pay-per-view but if not a pay-per-view a good headliner and then whoever won would be boosted up and the other one wouldn't lose too much because you kind of lost when you're young like canelo when he lost to floyd when he was young so he was still able to have a tremendous career after when two fighters fight when they're young they can still come back later when they're in their man built body prime and come back and have another mega fight. So I think that they could get away with doing that now because right now boxing has to put on fights like that. He's not fighting a Leo Santa Cruz. He's not fighting a Tank Davis. He's not fighting none of those guys. There's no way. He's not fighting none of those guys. There's no way. Don't even call him out. Don't say none of that. If I was Ryan Garcia, if I was Ryan Garcia or Devin Haney, I'd be calling out Roley. I don't know. He's an intern belt or whatever. Whatever he's got, that's who I would be calling out. I'd be calling him out to try to get his name on my resume. That's his best. That's whoever's making these fights. That's the best thing that they should do. That is the best thing that they should do. Um, moving on. Benavidez lost his title, lost his WBC. No, I don't know what belt he lost. I want to say he's WBC, but he lost his belt. And now he's supposed to fight Caleb Plant. I don't think we, I mean, we want to see it, but we know who reigns supreme at all of these weight classes. Between 168, I mean, between 160 and 175, there's only two names. Two. Canelo Alvarez and Jamar Chalo. Maybe Triple G, but he's old. Triple G's old. Those are the only two names. Oh, wow. Okay, here we go. I'm reading this right now, live on live while I film this. Mayweather CEO and new champ Roland Romero confirm immediate rematch with Marirez uh, will be the next fight. That's good. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad. That just came out. Okay. That's good. I'm excited about that because that's what needs to happen. I'm glad that the Mayweather team was like, nah, 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 kid. 
You you can't get away with that one. You got to run that back, which is good. You got to put fighters through that. Sometimes you lose like that or, you know what I mean? You got to go back out there and show because you can't have the whole boxing world saying you, the only reason why you won is because you're with Floyd Mayweather. You can't have people saying that about you. Just You just can't. Like, you just, you can't go on the rest of your boxing career like that. You know what I mean? So I'm glad that I just saw that, um, you know, I'm glad uh, that that makes me very happy. Other news, other news that we got going on in boxing. Let's you, see. Oh, so <laughs> oh, they, uh, give me some time. Okay. Yeah. Other news we got going on in boxing or the Daniel or not even boxing UFC Daniel Cormier fight. Leave a comment down below who you think won that fight. Leave a comment down below. To me, I thought I'm switching over to UFC. Um, I thought. I don't know. I thought that fight should have been. That fight could have definitely been a draw because Cormier was stuffing all of his all of his takedowns, but he was getting pieced up, but he fought with a with a bad eye. Like that poke in the eye. I don't I don't think that fight would have went that way if his eye wasn't that messed up. I can see those guys fighting a fourth time. Because if his eye isn't that messed up, I think he's able to throw his shots a lot better and he's not worried about his eye the whole damn fight. It sucks that stuff like that happens and really takes away a fighter because you knew that you're fighting a one-eyed Daniel Cormier. Like, and then that makes me lead the question, you barely beat him. I think it's time for John Jones to step up. I think it's time for John Jones to step up to heavyweight. I really believe he could beat that guy. I think it's time. He's been training his ass off, lifting weights and doing all this other stuff with his dog and stuff like that. I think it's time. It's about time he steps up, moves up to heavyweight and becomes two, div two division champion. He's undefeated. And really, win if I was him, I'd win the heavyweight champion of the world and retire. There's, no, there's nothing else he can accomplish. There's nothing else that John Jones in the UFC can, can accomplish unless he has more fights on his contract with Dana White, but there's nothing else. Right off into the sunset, have the greatest career, have the career that Roy Jones Jr. was supposed to have after he won the heavyweight title of the world from John Ruiz. John Jones has the opportunity to go down in UFC history as the greatest fighter ever, even over George St. Pierre. He has that opportunity if he can go up to heavyweight and beat this guy. He should do it. That should be his 2020 fight. Finish the decade off with that mega fight. Go up there, win that belt, fight his ass off, win that belt, and just say, Dana White, I'm done. I retire. I'm done. Oh, my God. I'm reading more. As, I read the, as I'm reading, notes are coming in. I mean, stories are coming in. Gary Russell Jr. Uh, told Al Heyman, Send Terrence Crawford an official fight offer. Stop. Please, guys, stop. Please. Like, okay, so this right here, this isn't what Jamel does. <laughs> this isn't what Jamel does. Jamel is 154. Jamel can call out a light heavyweight. Jamel can call out a light heavyweight. Damn near a cruiserweight. Because he's pretty he's a decently hyped guy. He can call out damn near a cruiser. Not a heavyweight, but he can call out damn near a cruiserweight. He can call out a guy two or three weight classes above him. Jamel Charlo can do that and be dead serious about it. But Gary Russell calling out Terrence Crawford is like I don't even know. That's like that's like Ryan Garcia calling out Pacquiao. Like in his prime, like that's like Ryan Garcia calling out Manny Pacquiao in his prime. And I, you know what? With Ryan Garcia's speed, I'll probably give it to him. So I won't even use him. That's like Leo Santa Cruz at 130 calling out Manny Pacquiao at 147. That's literally what that is. That's Leo Santa Cruz at 130 calling out Manny Pacquiao in his prime. Terrence Crawford is in his prime. There is no, there is, I don't, I don't know what, what's going on. I don't know if it's CTE with this kid. Again, I'm not trying to pass my judgment, but 
there, there's, I know that everybody else in the boxing world is like, yo, what's going on with you, with Gary Russell? Because he hasn't had a fight. He's calling out everybody but Lomachenko, the guy who smoked him. I don't get it. Everybody's like, you got to get past 135 Lomachenko. When you do that, then you can call out the bigger guys. But to call out Terrence Crawford at 147, I think he just want to check. I think as long as he's talking, he's getting views and he's getting attention so that whenever he goes to fight whoever the heck he's going to fight, he can warrant whatever money because he's going to say he's buzzing. So he just keeps calling out these guys that he knows he's never going to fight. If you know you're never going to fight somebody, you can say whatever the hell you want. People say it all the time. They talk trash to fighters all the time because they know they will never see them in person. They know this. They know this. And this is exactly what Gary Russell's doing. Like this, 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 this shit has got to stop. Like this shit has got to stop. You can't like re- re- reveal Crawford negotiations, spills tea and hatchet KD. Like stop. Like you're not. Everybody knows the code of sparring wars and stuff like that. You keep that stuff in the gym. I don't know. Somebody's gonna clip this kid and then he might calm down. A good fight that I'd like to see Gary Russell at at 140 is him and Broner. I think that would be a really good fight. I don't think Broner will fight him because they kind of know each other from that Midwest, but I think that would be a good fight. I think that'd be a, that fight outside the ring would be crazy, the amount of talking that they would do. But that fight would be crazy. That'd be a really good fight. Let's see what's going on in boxing world as far as the schedules. Let's see what we got. We got some big fights coming up. Okay, guys, so here we go. Boxing schedules. I'm going to go here. If you don't know what fights is coming up, this right here is a boxing schedule schedule that's coming up for Showtime Boxing. So for Showtime, we got... Oh. Okay, August 22nd. Oh, that's, that's next week. Is that next week? I think that's next week. Yeah, next week. Okay, so next next Saturday... It says uh, the main event, Sean Porter versus Sebastian Formella. I don't even know who that is, but it's Sean Porter. So I'm going to I'm gonna support. I'll definitely be watching that fight next Saturday. Um, September 19th. Again, these are the Showtime coming up fights. I don't know these two guys. That's super welterweight, Terrell Gusha and Eckerson Lubin. I don't know who they are. Um, and then we got the September 26th pay-per-view, which is Jamal Charlo versus Sergey. I can't pronounce his last name, but the guy who fought Triple G and, in some people's opinion, beat Triple G. And then Jamal Charlo on the undercard versus Jason Rosario. Um, I can't wait. That those I can't wait for September 26th. That's going to be some really good fights on Showtime. Now, ESPN's boxing schedule. We got... Elder Alvarez on August 22nd versus Joe Smith Jr. I think that's the guy who beat uh, Bernard Hopkins. I don't know. Not really many names that are on this ESPN Plus card. Yeah, you got Victor Postal August 29th. I don't even know who's... You know, I don't even know who he's fighting. I don't know. It just seems like a top rank card. So I don't know. That's as far as that. Fox Boxing. November 21st. We got to wait forever. And these guys are still training. Um, Danny Garcia versus Errol Spence for the WBC and IBF world titles. I don't know why the WBC is in there, but I get. Oh, no. Yeah. The, yeah. Spence has both of those titles. Yep. Uh, Pay per view boxing schedule. Let's see what's coming up with the pay-per-view. I think that's only the Jamel Charlo fight. Mm, yeah, I don't see any other fights. And then, oh, no, 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 no. Pay-per-view. Uh, Leo Santa Cruz, October 24th. Leo Santa Cruz versus Javante Davis, October 24th. And then I think the zone. Oh, here we go. August oh okay so so August twenty second is gonna be some good fights you got Alexander Povetkin versus uh, Dillian White on and then Sean Porter will also be fighting so it looks like they're fighting in the UK so that fight will be at two p.m. Eastern two p.m. New York time that fight will be that'll be a good fight 
That'll be a good fight. I, I definitely will see that at two o'clock and then in the nighttime, watch the Sean Porter fight. So yeah, August 22nd is gonna be a great night of boxing. So again, guys, thank you for tuning in to the Straight Outta Content Podcast. Also, Agree to Disagree Podcast. Please hit that like button. And if you don't like it, hit that dislike button. That's fine. But all I want you guys to do is just engage in conversation. Follow me on Instagram at Straight Out of Content. Um, make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you can be notified for all of the news. I drop in between the, uh, me filming my podcast. I also drop dates. I mean, I'm sorry. I also drop news on uh you know, boxing events and things that are going on. It looks like Floyd Mayweather's training and stuff like that. So just stay, stay in my YouTube and just keep checking back or, or hit that notification bell so you can be notified whenever something new kind of happens. I posted immediately when the Tyson versus Jones, uh, Roy Jones Jr. fight got moved to what looks like, I think, October or November. Um, I think it's because of training. I think somebody got injured. They're very old. I think somebody got injured and was like, hey, listen, this fight happening in September, I'm not going to be ready. There's no way I'm going to make the weight. There's no way I'm going to have enough time. I guarantee you we got pushed off. That or somebody got sick. So I don't know. But it's good that the fights are getting pushed off. Both fighters have more time to train. Um, they could probably take a little break. I think Roy Jones Jr. cannot afford to take a break. Um, I think Mike was peaking a lot faster. Now that the fight is pushed off about eight to ten weeks, he can, you know, kind of relax and then come back into training. I think Roy needs to seriously train if he doesn't want to get seriously hurt in the fight. So, again, guys, stay tuned because I'm giving you guys non-clickbait news. If you see it on my channel, it's non-clickbait, period. It's the facts. I researched it. I got the article, and I'm just giving you guys the news. That's it. Obviously, I'm not there to, to receive it, and I'm not actually talking to these fighters. So I always have my sources first. A lot of these guys out here are just doing clickbait. They're just doing, you know, videos for views. That's it. Just so they can get paid, and they're using you guys and your views and your subscriptions to get paid. I'm growing my channel organically. Thank you for all the people who keep subscribing. I've got 168 subscribers as of today, as of right now. And I'm just going to continue to grow to get to that 1,000, 2,000, you know, just continue to grow the channel. It's very young, uh, not even a year old. All right, guys, thank you. Please be safe. Make sure you guys wear your mask and everything and stuff like that. You can hit us up for merch, Flash Custom Designs on Instagram, Flash Custom Designs for Instagram if you need merch. Got my Straight Outta Content merch, got my Flash, I mean, got my false merch, stuff like that. So if you guys need anything custom made or if you're in the Texas area, please hit me up. Charlos, Jamel and, Jamel and Jamal, I need that interview. I'm right here in Houston. Right here in Houston, I need that interview. I need that interview before the fight. All right, guys, I need that interview. Also, if you guys can come out of hospital, come out of hospital, say what's up to the, say what's up to the heroes, say what's up to the nurses, and say what's up to the doctors and stuff like that. You know what I mean? You know, you guys can bring out the the Showtime camera crew and come through the hospital. It's your local hospital. It's right there in the medical center. We would really appreciate it if you guys came out there and showed. You know, you guys are fighters, so, you know, show the hospital and the working staff, you know, grateful for fighting this COVID and stuff like that, because we're on the front line and we're really fighting this, 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 you know, this big pandemic and this big virus and stuff like that. All right, guys, this is your boy Carl Mount.